Good afternoon. I'm Sean from Mountains Garage. Today we're going to talk about front end alignment and how and why. Backing up a little bit, I'm turning 55 this year. At 51, I quit my real job to work out here in my shop, working on hot rods, which really morphed into transmissions, rear ends, and fabrication because that's what I like to do. I'm only one guy and, uh, well, you know, I don't want to disappoint people, so I take in what I can, do what I can, do what I enjoy. It was hard leaving the safety net of a good job to go chase your dream, but my actual dream was being a stay-at-home dad, and I'm doing that, and between hours the bus is gone, here I am in my cold shop today in the state of Maine, January 2020. So a little history about me, uh, I worked at, I had four jobs in my real career. I worked at a transmission shop the day I was 15. I went to work after school and then I used to get out of school early, high school early and go to work. Worked Saturdays, learned a lot. Second job, another transmission shop which was actually cleaner and nicer. Learned different stuff there. Then one day, my buddy and I, he also worked at the transition shop, we went to work. Uh, we had a friend at a Chrysler dealership, went to work over there. And that was a stepping stone at best. I mean, at, at least, it was great. And uh, still look back with fond memories of that job. But anyway, now, we have alignments to do. And there was an alignment machine in the, on the property. In fact, uh, I became the guy that fixed the alignment machine. But... Uh, before that, I, uh, I'm a drag racer, and I had uh, already started build my tube chassis Chevelle, which is a whole other story. But anyway, that teaches you about things you need to know. Caster, camber, toe, and how to get the steering wheel straight, and that is why we're having a video today. So let's start with the simple stuff. Caster. Like most things automotive, the perspective is you sitting in the driver's seat. So picture that. We're in the driver's seat, and this is the kingpin, right? So I'm going to be in the driver's seat, and the more I tilt that kingpin back, the top, towards me, positive caster, the straighter the car is going to go. In a normal street vehicle, the most you're probably going to get out of this without modifying the control arms is probably four to five degrees. In a drag car, you need 10. 10 is you know, this industry standard. If you're going 200 miles an hour, you're going to want 10 degrees because that makes it go straight. You actually have to, you know, your steering wheel feel go up over center. Well, the more you lay it back, the harder it is to get, you know, the, the wheel wants to pop back straight. You let go of it, it's going to go straight. Uh, conversely, if you've got manual steering, what's well, a little harder to come over center, it actually will turn, but it's not insurmountable. And, uh, Again, I got a couple of Nova projects. One of them's gonna be a fast street car. Most I can hope for, it's got uh, QA1 arms on it. I might get seven degrees out of it. That's plenty, because my goals, you know, run mid eights you know, in a street car. That's pretty good, but everybody's doing it. <laughs> uh, the car's behind me on the wall. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, that one, I aligned with all the methods I'm gonna tell you today. I went 180, 150 times. And the silver one belongs to a buddy of mine. I drove that for a little while, now he drives it. And uh, that is a stock front suspension. Runs 850, about 168 or so. And uh, again, we lined it with the same stuff. I actually brought it to his house and did it on the floor of his garage. And uh, it's that easy. Now, I see a lot of people on the internet. I watch a lot of YouTube and whatnot. And they, uh, they're not afraid to rebuild the front suspension, the whole car. And then they get down, they finally get the motor running and everything else, and they get it down on the ground, and the first thing you want to do is hand it over to somebody else to get an alignment. You just rebuilt the front suspension. You're pretty much intimate with the whole thing. You trust yourself enough to do that. Why not take it the rest of the way? You can do it with a 2 by 4 and a piece of string. That's not what we're going to do today. I bought a couple hundred bucks worth of tools on Amazon or online somewhere. I collected over a couple years. Uh, I learned early on, early on that I... 
can't afford to pay anybody to do anything. And typically when you do, you're disappointed anyway, unless you're, you know, I, mean, I can't, put, can't fix my teeth, I, I can't fix my heart, I, you know, stuff like that. But however, if it's handy stuff around the house, being a hot rodder teaches you a lot of things. All of a sudden you need to build a shop. You're a carpenter. You're not a good one, but you build a shop. And then you got to wire it. And everything else involved in it, and all of a sudden you have skills that you didn't have before because you did it yourself out of necessity. All right, so enough about that. So we got caster down, right? The more you lay the imaginary line, either be at the kingpin or the ball joints, your top ball joint goes toward the back of the car, the straighter you're gonna go. A stock vehicle, oh, back to the alignment shop. You finally get your project on the road, you're gonna hand it over to a guy that's probably fantastic at alignment. But his machine, the modern machines, tell them the factory spec, which is three to five degrees tops, typically around three. Good for all out driving, makes the cast air nice, plenty safe. But, wait for that thing to pop away. You know, he's not, you're familiar with the project, they're not, why not do it yourself? So, that's not part of the tools I bought. Let's go over what I bought. First off, bought a cast of camber gauge, nice little box, maybe a hundred bucks, magnetic, sticks right on your uh, spindle, your hub, whatever you got, rotor, whatever flat surface you got, and it's going to tell you and instantly your camber. As soon as you stick it on there, let's talk about camber. Camber is, again, in the perspective of you sitting in the driver's seat, Looking out at the tire, like this Model A sitting over here, I can see the front tires. Uh, if it's out or in, that's positive or negative, right? You're looking for zero. So, caster, you're looking for, depending on what you're doing, five to 10 on a hot rod to anything you're gonna go fast and mess around with, you know, and don't wanna wreck it for unknown reasons. You need that many degrees of caster. Camber, you want zero. Why? Because you don't wanna wear the tire out. So, fully loaded at ride height. You want the tire flat on the ground. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, there you go. Other ways you can do it. You got a digital protractor and, a, and the rotor. You know, as long as the rotor's bolted on solid to the spindle, it's an excellent surface. I mean, if you can't trust your rotor, what do you got? You know, it's pretty true. To show you what you got. You could technically stick this over there if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Because it goes on the hub. This will t show you casting. Now, if you have kingpins, again, with your digital protractor, your magnetic, uh, angle gauge. Boom. I mean, this will get you the same result, except if you have A arms. Now, you're going to do a cast to sweep because you got nothing to lay the magnetic gauge on. So, with this still stuck on your hub, you need to turn in 15 degrees, zero this, and turn out 15 degrees. How do you do that, right? Because the thing's sitting on the ground, fully low to ride height. In fact, in a drag car, it's not that heavy. I even put 200 pounds of, you know, workout weights in it to simulate me. You know, 200s maybe, <laughs> maybe a stretch, maybe 210, 220. But anyway, these are just six-inch square plates that come with your roll cage kit. I put a little oil of grease between them, and I set the contact patch of the tire on top of it. You can buy turn plates. I didn't, works just fine. And now I can easily rotate the tire in and out manually. And when I, I go in 15 degrees, zero it, go the other way 15 degrees, it shows me the caster in positive or negative. Actually, if you do it backwards, you, it's gonna read backwards, but you know you can tell the things tip back, it should be reading positive. You just did it the wrong way, it still reads the same. Simple. So I got the vehicle sitting at right height, fully loaded, Sitting on my pads, I just did a cast to sweep. If I need to adjust, fine. Uh, moving on to tow for a minute, and we'll go back to the other stuff. I've got a few more things to talk about. Tow and keeping the steering wheel straight. You can, this is a scribe. You jack the vehicle up, you spin the tire. I like to put a little white or silver paint on it. You spin the tire, you hold this right up and probably right next to the center tread groove. You spin it, you make a nice, perfect groove. Don't trust the padding line on the tire. That thing 
not necessarily 100% true. And with tow in or tow out, if it's a front wheel drive, tow in is pretty much anything hot rod related or race car, unless it's a stock car, I'm not going there. Uh, you want a nice accurate line because you're only talking an eighth of eighth to three, one eighth to three sixteenth tow in. It's towed in because under stress, all your suspension parts are probably going to pull it out straight. If you start straight, it's going to go out the other way, and you don't want to be towed out because then you're handling like a shopping cart. So one eighth to three sixteenth in is pretty much universal anywhere for anything rear wheel drive, four wheel drive. Uh, if you're talking front wheel drive cars. They're towed out for the same reason. When you power up, it pulls them in. You want the wheels straight up and down, straight down the road, and laid back enough so it's holding you steady when you let go of the wheel. That's front end alignment, not rocket science. There's other Aikerman angles and stuff like that when you're actually building it, but we're not going in it today. This is just simple adjustments. So now you've scribed your tire. This is called a trammel, kind of big, but I'm going to show you on this Model A here in a few minutes, but you got to scribe in each tire, you got to go around the back side, is easiest. Put this on the scribe, put this on the scribe, and that's zero, right? Now you bring it around the front, don't adjust it, just stand it up, put one side on the scribe, and the other side is going to show you exactly what you have for toe in and toe out. Works really nice. If you got the room, sometimes you get low hanging stuff, headers and whatnot. Doesn't work that easy. So now I invested, you could make these yourself. Toe plates. This just sits right against the tire on each side. Got a handy magnetic strip to hold your tape measure on the opposite side because I usually work by myself. And using this slot, you measure one at the front and the back just like you just did with the trammel. And it's going to tell you toe in or toe out. And you can adjust accordingly. Now, how do you get your wheel straight? A lot of people ask that question. So when I get into talking about adjustments in a minute, toe is the last thing you do. You do cast a camber together. A lot of times one adjustment affects the other. So you're gonna do them both at the same time and accomplish what you want. And then the whole time you're doing this, you don't want to let it, because your tie rods are still hooked up and you get moving the control arm around, you're gonna to tow it in and out a lot. So I like to have my tie rods already loose and I just keep them straight. I can sight down to the back tire. I can use a two by four, a piece of metal, a string, something. I just want to keep them pretty well straight so I'm not affecting my readings. You know, if you have zero camber and then turn it a little bit, you know, with the kingpin axis and stuff like that, you're going to stop moving it and it's not going to read accurate. So just keep them straight as possible. We're not worrying about towing yet, but just keep them straight so you can do the other two adjustments. I hope that makes sense. But this may require some editing. Again, I'm new to this. Moving on. How to get the steering wheel straight. Now, if you have, here's a good example, a two-wheel drive square body Chevy. You know, everybody loves those, 73 to technically 93, but most of them are 87. Uh, a two-wheel drive, your steering box is hooked directly, your steering column is hooked directly to your steering box, and your Linkage is not adjustable other than your tie rods. So that is where you'd have to straighten the wheel out and adjust your toe. If you have a four-wheel drive, square body, or any vehicle with a drag link, that's adjustable. So you can set your cast a camber toe and worry about straightening your wheel afterwards. If you don't have that, adjust, that, that fourth adjustment, if you will, in the drag link, you have a cross steering, which is also drag link. Whatever you have, you need to do it with your tie rods. So, this cool rig here, I put the steering wheel straight, just lock it down to the seat. Now that wheel's held straight. And no matter where, I, you know, the wheels may be towed in correctly now, because I already set the toe a minute ago, but now they're actually sitting like this. I need to bring them back straight by moving the adjusters. If I move the adjusters the same, I got a tie rod adjuster over here and a tie rod adjuster over here. If I use, move both the turn to go straight, some people would leave it like that. In a few minutes, I can recheck it. So that's optional. I typically recheck it because despite my messy shop, I'm kind of like that way. Uh, a lot of people 
automatically think anytime you do any suspension work, you need to do a alignment. Now, you got all the tools, you can recheck it, no problem. But in theory, unless you have hit something, let's just say I had a old pickup outside that in, I put a sticker on it in October, the following spring, it sits most of the winter. I don't drive my stuff in the salt. I got one sacrificial vehicle because we use a lot of salt here in Maine. And uh, my good stuff sits in the yard. I don't get to use it all year long, but at least it should last a lot of years, side by. That vehicle was aligned at one point. My tires are wearing fine. I noticed some play in the ball joints. So I changed the ball joints. You haven't physically moved the control arms. You haven't hit anything. Why did the alignment change? I guess over time the bushes may be where I guess it's possible, but depending on how fresh your car, your vehicle is, you know, you can make that choice. But checking it's not a big deal. But it is optional. There's no better indication of your front end alignment being right is your tire. And they show signs of it not being right within a couple thousand miles. Uh, limitations on the factory control arm. I did a Nova for a guy, had an iron big block in it, six cylinder springs. It hung on the lift for a while while I was working on it. I set it down, I did the whole alignment, everything was nice. Over, overnight, the springs <laughs> continued to settle, and there's not enough adjustment not to have uh, a lot of camber which affected, I mean, it needs to modify, because it's not, I'm gonna show you on an over over here, you actually move the control arm with shims, and when you are maxed out this way, that's all the caster you're gonna get, and then you still gotta set your camber, so you, I mean, you just cannot get the tires, you can get all the caster you can, you can't get the, the tires to stand straight up and down because the suspension is beyond its limits. You're better off getting enough spring that would hold it straight and then lowering it with a drop spindle or maybe take a little coil and a little drop spindle, but I'm getting totally off subject because that's what I do. Let's go look at the Model A here for a minute. Again, I'm new to this, so let's just bear with me. This is old school. It has kingpins. Beautiful, simple kingpins. So, let's take the old cast of camera gauge. Bear with me, I'm going to do a lot of editing. Cast camber gauge. I made a spacer in the lathe. Lathe. Lathe, yeah. This thing's magnetic. Got a wicked magnet on it. It'll stick through the spacer. And down here, I just hold it on there. I can already tell you, I got zero camber. And... In this situation, I don't need to do a caster sweep. I can. It will give me the same reading as this will. If I put this on my gang pen, or this too, this is the angle I'm looking for. So, you know, 90 degrees is way up here. So you take your reading and you can go read it. I brought about five degrees. I've already checked this, but you know, this is the angle of that king pen laying back. Let's talk methods of adjustment. The Model A I'm going to show you has a traditional cast front axle, and when that is cherry red hot, that's when they set the camber. And to fix it again, you'd have to do the same. You have to heat it up and bend it. Probably not going to happen in your home shop. Probably not going to change. It's overbuilt for the car. Car's not very heavy. No problem. Now, when you mount it on the, I have split wishbones on it. When I mount the wishbones onto the frame, the wishbones connect to the axle, that's a fixed angle. It's holding the axle back, and then when I lower the bracket, I can move it that way a little bit. You don't want to hang it down too much, it looks stupid. Nobody wants that. So very traditional. So I can set the toe all day long, the caster and camber, are pretty much done when you build it. So Cast iron front axles, and 98% of the big rigs you see on the road dump trucks and such are still a cast axle. So the, ca <laughs> the camber on those is probably not going to change. If you do, you got to heat it up and bend it. Caster, you can add pie-shaped shims between the axle and the leaf springs and tilt it back toward you for more caster or just the other way around. Uh, typically on a big truck, the only thing you check on an alignment is uh, the 
tie rod, and that typically doesn't move because it's literally the tie rod. It's this big around. It's huge. Aom vehicles, God bless them, the few and five between these days, either have shims, which I'm going to show you on that Nova, where you adjust it this way, or you have bolts through the A-arm itself where it attaches to the frame uh, with eccentrics, you know, oblong washers, and you turn those against a stop, and that does the same thing. Whereas the Nova's got studs in the frame and the shims go between that and the A-arm moving in and out and back and forth. Most everything on the road today got strut front end. And most fast drag cars, if you're not running the stock front suspension class, has a lightweight strut. When you build it, if you're a chassis builder, you set most of that ahead of time. Your lower control arm's adjustable. Up is fixed. So you do it all in the bottom control arm on a typical you know, manufactured vehicle with a strut front end. Seldom is the upper strut strut mount adjustable. It is on some, but very seldom. Typically, the lower control arm is fixed. Also, in the strut itself, where it joins a spindle, has two oblong holes with eccentrics, and that's where your adjustment takes place. Which leads me to my next subject. I'm going to show you, I've showed you my tools, I'm going to show you the vehicles and the methods and whatnot. Is it as good as a brand new state-of-the-art alignment machine? Well, in the end, you're going to get the same result. And I've done it both ways. I actually went from an electronic machine at the Chrysler dealership to the Slides Municipality, where at the time we had turn plates and a cast of camber gauge and a trammel. I went to work as a police mechanic, and you know they have high-speed pursuit. And in no time, the, well, I worked at 28 years. I eventually became a heavy truck mechanic. But... Uh, we also balanced tires the old-fashioned way, too, not with an electronic machine until the last few years before I left. And we got also got a brand-new, state-of-the-art alignment machine. We finally, you know, decided to step into the modern era. What we found out was, despite the factory training and everything else, it's real easy to forget when to lock and unlock the heads, and it's also easy to bump the head while you're reaching in there to talk about that strut adjustment I was just talking about, or to adjust your control arms. And you're out to lunch, and you got to either start over or you don't notice it, and your alignment's out to lunch. Whereas the old traditional methods, I find are easier. Uh, again, personal experience, your results may differ. All right, here's a bit of view of the tools, the plates. This is how you're going to shim the control arm. We're going to go check that out in a minute. Just a simple, cheap, you can get these in digital too which is cool. To cast the camber gauge, this is a spacer I made. So you can actually space it out. It's got a big nut. I already took the cotter pin off and I, you can just hold it up there and read it. I could do a cast a sweep. Right. This is uh, the toe plates. Let's talk about the toe plates. It's that simple. You set it on there. Tape measure in either groove, one on each side. That's your toe. The trammel. Again, you would jack it up. I like to go in this groove over here. So I would paint this groove, jack it up, spin the tire, hold this against it accurately. You want it sitting right on the ground. You want a nice line to measure from on both sides. If you didn't have toe plates, you can, I, I'm showing you two different methods here. And you got this trammel that you would measure between them. You'd set it on the groove you painted over there, groove you painted over there. I do the back first, come around to the front. Don't move the adjustment. Move it to the back, put it on the, on the uh, lines, move it around the front, take your reading. Works pretty slick. Now the Model A, we'll get into this eventually, but it's a project. LS powered. TKO 500, 9 inch Ford, 320 gear, should go pretty good. A little high, but it's okay. I'm trying to disguise the motor. I had a set of other valve covers on it, kind of made it look like a small block Ford. I'm not a Ford guy, but it seems more you know, fitting, I guess. But this is a six liter carbureted. When I did it, I don't want to tell you how many years it's been sitting here. Too many. 
But uh, I wanted to period correct. Nowadays, uh, I'd probably put twin throttle bodies on it. Let's go out and look at your traditional AM suspension. Excuse my messy shop. I do a lot of transmission work. His engines, his rear ends, you name it. This place is a madhouse. If you stick with me, like and subscribe and all that stuff, eventually we're going to cover it all. All right. This particular 72 Nova I bought as a project. I haven't done a lot of work on it. It has a lot of good parts. Most of it installed incorrectly. So I'm gonna go over the entire car, fix the roll cage. It's gonna get, I'm not sure a single, a twin turbo LS, a 400 with a brake that I already built. It's got a nine inch Ford. I got about four or five different ratio pigs all set up because I love doing nine inch Fords. So back to alignments. In this situation, even the car sitting here at rest is loose. You know, the more you move, widen this gap, the more cash you're going to get, you would be tipping that ball joint back. At the same time, using shims on both sides, you need to make that tire stand straight up and down at ride height, fully loaded, ready to drive. But in this car here, this is where your adjustment takes place. This is GMs from the 60s on up, all oh, 50s on up, technically. Uh, this car's got a unisteer rack, so the adjustments in the you know, Relatively easy on both sides. Haven't hooked up the steering yet and all that stuff, but that is it for uh, the AM. Again, these are probably slightly longer. This car already sits low, even without a motor in it, and the tire is zero straight up and down. So that's a good thing. All right, so again, I'm not an actor. I'm a mechanic. This is my first YouTube video. Not as smooth as I hoped it would go. It was hotter than it looks. But I'm going to do try to do one a week. And uh, I'm going to have nine projects of my own, plus all the stuff I do for other people. Uh, we're going to go through everything you wanted to know about a 9-inch Ford. We're going to probably assemble one. Uh, Turbo 400 with a trans brake. Her shifters. I've been into her shifters lately, and I've been modifying, putting raw aluminum rods and rod ends and stuff on it, and rebuilding old vertical gate stuff. That's cool. Uh, it makes me happy. Stuff's wicked expensive, so, like for instance, the little Hurst arms, I started making them on the mill because they're 25, 30 bucks a piece. That's, you know, sometimes my budget for my whole project. Anyway. Like and subscribe, that's what YouTube's all about. Just gonna make it work. Uh, this is part of my new job. I'm gonna start making videos. So welcome aboard. We got a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of stuff to cover. I'll try not to ramble. I might repeat myself. Again, I'm not an actor. I got a face for radio. <laughs> Good night.